everyone, it's Caroline. Um, so I'm going to do a video uh, based on something someone had asked me in my comments on my page. So there are a few questions and I'll try to address all of them collectively or one and see what happens. So one was um, if I could talk about going into IP or inpatient. And hold on, I'm going to close my window. Um, I never went into inpatient, so I can't speak from personal experience. Um, I did all outpatient work, and at one point I had an eating disorder specialist, a nutritionist, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a stomach doctor, like a lot of stuff. Um, so that was just my journey towards healing, and then I was in therapy for a long time. I went through a few nutritionists. But, um, so my thoughts on IP, or it was about going into inpatient, is that if that's the road for you, then that's the road for you. There's no, there's no right way to recover from an eating disorder. There's only what's right for you. There's only a right way to get in touch with yourself. So, again, like, I, I don't want to address it too much because I don't have enough personal experience to speak about it, but I do know that, um, I do know people that have been in inpatient programs for different sorts of um, addictions or recoveries, and it works really well for a lot of people. So, again, it's important to find not only the, the like, program that's going to work for you, but the place, the environment, the right team of people, um, just like with people that are on medications, it's about finding the balance and the right medication. So, um, again, I, I don't know what to say about inpatient except that um, if that's the best route for you to go in wholeheartedly because no matter what recovery process you're going through, it's important to want to do it and to be open-minded and, um, and to be... and to be and to be willing to do the work, whether that's inpatient or outpatient, you have to be willing to do the work. So that's the number one thing about inpatient, outpatient, is, is, is wanting to recover and wanting to heal and wanting to work with whomever you're going to be surrounded with that wants you to heal as well and is there to help you. And when there's a point of contention, when it's difficult to to heal because you're in an environment or with people that make it difficult, it's important to express that. So, so that's why I have to say on that. Um, another question was what to say to friends with the same problem of an eating disorder and about um, dependent and codependent relationships. Um, to say to a friend with the same problem, separating it from the codependent and the dependent problem, um, <clears throat> it's just that you that you know what it's like and you're there and that um, I, I don't know like I I had a really good friend in, at one point in my life who had an eating disorder and and being able to talk about it with her was really really helpful um, and to this day it's helpful so I think knowing that you're not alone is like the biggest thing um, I just read a book about a called 90 Minutes in Heaven. I read it for a book club, and this guy, like, um, is in a car accident, and he ends up dying medically for 90 minutes and coming back to life. And he was really, really depressed until someone else in the next hospital room was going through a similar injury as he, and that opened him up to recovery. And so I think being able to empower one another is important, without depending on each other and without bringing each other down. So, for example, it's unhealthy to have a friend with this, you know, let's say, for example, let's say I have, when I had an eating disorder, like, it would have been unhealthy to have a friend who was also bulimic and who would say, like, let's go binge and purge together. That would be unhealthy. What's empowering is to have a friend who says, you're awesome, you're amazing, what did you do today? Tell me about what you did to empower yourself and to listen to that and say, cool, well, that's going to inspire me to do this to empower myself. Like, But to be dependent on each other um, 
also is not good to say, I need you to help save me. I need you to heal me. That's not how it works. You heal yourself. And that goes back to the inpatient stuff. Like, this is all about healing yourself and being your own best healer. And, and it's all about taking everything we learn from everyone else in our life, be they medical professionals or um, health professionals, healing professionals, or just friends and family, and, and taking that and, and turning it into the best solution for ourselves. Um, another, oh, so that from that question about codependent relationships, um, the person had commented that sh she keeps seeing people online who are in constant communication with others that are pro-eating disorders. So with that, it's, again, it's knowing listening to yourself enough and to your own intuition to know this is not helping me in my recovery. This is feeding, pun intended, this is feeding the illness. So I don't know if that's helpful, but it's, I, I guess the sort of like bottom line thesis of all this inpatient codependency, a friend with the same problem, is that you're your own best healer. And it's important to know that you're not alone. That's essential. But it's, and it's important to get the best care and recovery um, structure in place that works for you. And it's important to want to do that for yourself. To know that you're, you're, <laughs> you're amazing enough to, to be worth the recovery. That's what it comes down to, right? Like, isn't that what it, it, that's what it comes down to is, is being at ease with ourselves, is loving ourselves, and knowing that we are amazing and that we not only deserve but must be healthy and happy and, and, sh and love ourselves to share that love with others. That's what it all comes down to, you know, like, that's what recovery is, is, is love, is healing, that, that's, and any way that manifests itself. You know, like, I have, if you can't tell, I have a really bad cold right now. And and I kept, like, fighting it and resisting it and being like, I don't want to be sick. I don't like when I'm sick. Like, I'm too good to be sick. And then I, like, finally surrendered this morning, and I was like, okay, I have a cold. Like, a lot of people get cold. The weather changed. There's maybe energy shifts going on in the universe. I don't know. Like, I'm, you know, I have a cold. Big deal. But the only way to get better is with love and to, and everything I do to get better from this cold is, is a manifestation of loving myself. Going, you know, I don't take um, Western medicine, so I went to Whole Foods and got this natural cold and flu medicine that I really like. Um, it's these, it's a bunch of herbs and I, and that's an act of love to myself. And, like, I use, um, I use this thing called the neti pod that helps clear my sinuses. Um, it, it, it's like wa salt water that you flush out your nose with. And that is an act of love to myself. That's not about fighting a cold or guarding myself or shielding myself for a cold. That's about loving myself and working through and surrendering to what's going on. So that's what recovery is, and that's what impatient and sharing with people and group therapy and solo therapy and any way that recovery works for a person, that's what it is. It's an act of love to yourself because you have to love yourself. That's the most important thing in the world is love to yourself and then to others. Um, and, and usually loving yourself is loving others too. Well, always. It's a it's a collective give and take. It's a sharing process. So I hope that answers um, the question I was asked, and and is some you know um, is stuff for thought. <laughs> so I hope everyone's having a beautiful Thursday, and um, talk soon.